if you take action, if we the people take action, there's no way the globalists can carry out their operations. That's why they feed us GMO that in every study retards the rats that they feed it to and the monkeys that they feed it to and the apes. That's why they give us the fluoride that in Princeton and Harvard and University of Texas and uh, Oxford studies shows around 20% IQ reduction. If you just drink fluoridated water at 1.6 part per million, uh, which is what they put in our water uh, for a decade. And I, I just mentioned that again because they have MSNBC going, he's insane. He thinks we put fluoride in the water. Now it's not that they're putting this stuff in the water. It's that they're saying that they're not even putting it in the water. It's like Obama, and I played the clip in the last hour. It's up on Infowars.com said there's not even allegations the NSA is trying to listen in on people's email. That's like Gibbs saying there, there is no drone program when the drone program is publicly admitted to exist. We are under a dictatorship of kleptocrat eugenicists who enjoy hurting us. Just like depleted uranium, they wouldn't use it until 1990. They had it since World War II. After the Manhattan Project, 1946, there's papers on it. We've read them on air. We've had Dr. Uh, Doug Rocky on, a nuclear physicist, uh, biologist, former head of the Pentagon DU program. They would not allow them to use it in combat until 1990. And then now they just use it everywhere. Now they just put it in concrete additives. Now it's in forklifts. Now it's everywhere. And the cancer rates go up and up and up and up. 91% of nuclear reactors are leaking. That's an Associated Press headline you can pull up. Out of 420-something reactors, 91% are leaking. Last year when they had reactors leaking out in Southern California, their answer was, well, we'll just stop turning the alarms on in the city that have been there for 50 years when this happens. So it is an insanity by the elite. Where, well, I played the clip yesterday where the Japanese government is putting on newscasts that if you smile, studies show things won't hurt you. And so smile and the radiation won't hurt you. Uh, there's the headline, a brainwashing campaign, radiation doesn't affect people who are smiling. And that is an attempt by the Japanese government on the news. We played the clip. By the way, if you're a new listener, I'm not joking. They're saying if you smile, it would protect you. Doesn't matter that most of the people that responded now are either dead or dying. You know, the, uh, the, the uh, hundreds of people that were willing to go in there and try to clean that up. And now it's melting down and degrading even more. Now, now it's getting worse. And, 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 and the stuff's pouring into the ocean. You've got multiple reactors that are still very dangerous. You've got all these fuel rods. The cleanup's beginning. And you've got TEPCO saying it's extremely dangerous, but you've got our media saying there's no problem, even though three months after the FDA tested yellowfin tuna off San Diego and didn't tell people for a year after that. So that's uh, 15 months after that, oh, yeah, we found higher radiation, in fact, a lot higher, in some cases 10 times higher than what we say is safe in the yellowfin, these different cesiums, uh, you know, breakdowns. And we say it's okay now. We're just going to raise what's safe. Now, now I've kind of set the table for that there. I've read a lot of shocking stuff in RT about, you know, this could be the greatest meltdown ever uh, coming and could kill millions. Is that fear-mongering? I see articles about, you know, the UN says that they believe Chernobyl's killed a million people since 1986, 20-plus years ago. Is uh, Who knows? Uh, I, I've had Dr. Bob Bowman on, who's a physicist, saying, undoubtedly, we will have more deaths in the, in the Northern Hemisphere from this radiation. The Northern Hemisphere is over two times higher radiation. Now, you've got all these reports in Alaska where a lot of the radiation is actually gone, of the, sh of the animals dying, the people's hair falling out. The man who's really on top of this, who's advised the EU, the British government, he's a chemical physicist, has a lot of other letters to his name. He's the other camp from the Japanese government saying, smile, radiation's good for you, or George Mombiot saying, we need more radiation, it's good for you, or uh, Ann Coulter saying on Fox News that the Japanese should be thankful, radiation's good for you, that's an actual quote. Uh, so I think she should go live there at Fukushima since she says that. I'm not kidding. Go live there or shut up. 
because uh, I don't like this, folks, the fact that there were all these reports of milk and stuff, even in Texas with higher radiation. They're like, oh, don't worry. I mean, I mean, I, just because the elite has gone crazy and thinks all of this is fine doesn't mean the rest of us have to go off the deep end. Uh, delusional thinking, smiling won't protect you. And so Christopher Busby is a British scientist, uh, and uh, he heads up a lot of very important advisory groups, uh, the low-level radiation campaign, LLRC. And again, I don't just go off what he says as a physicist. I have had countless physicists, the former head of the Star Wars program on, the head of the Pentagon program on. I've probably had, let's not exaggerate, I don't know, 20 or so nuclear physicists on, famous submarine physicists on, you name it, who said they were lied to, low-level, if it gets into your body, is just as bad because it's point blank up against the cells. So I'm no physicist, but I can talk to all the top physicists. And all the physicists agree with this 50, 60 years ago, even 20 years ago. So there's a new irrational, delusional, let them eat cake, Marie Antoinette on PCP action where everybody just says this is fine now. now he's been a hard guy to get. He's very, uh, very busy. But uh, he's, he's able to uh, join us uh, uh, now. Uh, Christopher Busby, and Christopher, feel free with all the sites you're involved with uh, to mention where people should get all your studies and material. But you've, you've heard my little five-minute rant here. I mean, am I the one that's insane? Should I smile and go live at Fukushima where the animals are now deformed, the butterflies and the children? Or, or are you right? Is, is radiation bad for us? Alex, you're, you're spot on with your rant, and I hope you continue to rant like this, but I, I can't see any easy way of persuading the governments of the world and the, the scientific committees, the bogus scientific committees that they've set up to operate this system of chicanery and lies, any way of stopping them. I mean, to be honest, these people ought to be sent to jail, and, and perhaps one day that will happen, who knows? But at the moment, I see no sign of them backing off from what is clearly a very, very serious problem, and in my opinion, probably the worst public health scandal in, in, in human history, and one that is very likely set on destroying all life on Earth, if it's continued unabated, this is really a serious, serious problem. I mean, I'll give you an example, a very, a very recent example of, of, of the sort of uh, Alice in Wonderland world that we're living in uh, with regard to radiation. Now, you, you will recall that the World Health Organization Supremo, a uh, bloke called Wolfgang Weiss, Dr. Wolfgang Weiss, they had a meeting in 2012 to, to talk about the uh, health effects of Fukush Fukushima. And of course, they said there wouldn't be any. It wouldn't be any. There would be no detectable health effects. Now, what we discover in the last few months is that a study done by uh, the, the medical university in Fukushima has turned up now, well, originally 27 cases of thyroid cancer in children, and it's now gone up to 44 cases of thyroid cancer in children. This is an official study. Now, the, the university department which made this study they say i mean and it's quoted in the japan times they say we do not see that these thyroid cancers are associated with the, with the fukushima contamination i mean can you imagine such nonsense now the the actual um background rate for thyroid cancer in japan I, i've dug out it's actually zero now, uh, so, so this was a study done in 2005, and if we, uh, my, uh, my colleague, um, uh, Professor Michael Malko of the Institute of Power in Belarus uh, worked on the increases in thyroid cancer in, in Chernobyl, and he was able to determine a rate, a pre-Chernobyl rate in thyroid cancer in children. And it was something like um, three cases in 16 years in the whole population of Belarus, okay? Now, therefore, uh, it's easy to work out that the excess r risk in, fu in Fukushima of thyroid, ch ch thyroid cancer in children is approximately 200 times the expected value. So it's not like 1.5 or 1.3 or 20 percent or something like that. It's about 200 times. But nobody's saying, oh gosh, we got it wrong. Or, oh dear, the internal radiation must be worse than we thought or any of this stuff. We hear a deadly silence from these people. They should all be sent to jail. What has changed, Dr. Busby, because and then I want to come back and talk about uh, the critical nature in the press and how bad off are the six reactors, the five damaged? Why are they saying a bigger disaster could come? Explain it to uh, you know laymen like myself out here. But we're going to break in about right. a minute and a half. Okay. But first, 
why are we seeing this delusional manifestation and, and, and what do you liken it to uh, where all over the world they're just raising the level saying it's safe now? What is this, mass madness or what is it? I think it must be some kind of psychological denial. I, th I think you'd probably better talk to sociologists and psychologists about this rather than to a scientist. I mean, I have thought about it and I thought of the various ways in which it can work. And, and I can step back from it and step back from it. And eventually we get back to a situation where it is really quite political. It's, it's, it's about the domination of one, uh, one set of people by another set of people and the wars and the lies and so on that have continued throughout the whole of history. And so in order to explain this, basically all you're doing is, 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 is explaining all the things that have happened in history, which are equally insane, to be honest. We've had situations like this again and again throughout history and this is, so therefore it's not really anything new there except that in this case it's a question of the magnitude so in the past you could have one uh, one set of mafia if you like dominating the people you could have people like for instance in the soviet union originally you could have people disappearing and the airbrushing of history and so on and we now see all of this thing all of this stuff happening in the united states too. well stay there explain it to us on the other side because I, i'm guessing you're going to say now it's a global corporate mafia above the law and they've got melting down reactors so the threat is much larger i want to hear uh, the end of this when we come back with dr busby i'm alex jones the important thing about the Pro One filter today is that the material we use for removing fluoride and other heavy metals now will remove the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. There's no other fluoride reduction filter out there that will remove that type of fluoride. And it's extremely important because Today, we're hearing more and more cities are using that form of fluoride. We've been having medication forced on us through the water system for quite a while. Most people don't realize it. Most people don't realize the negative effects of fluoride. There's a wide range of health effects that are attributed to fluoride. Bottom line, why should somebody get this new Pro One Pro Pure filter? The reason to buy the Pro One, it's an all-in-one filter. It's convenient, easy to use. It doesn't require the add-on fluoride filter. And in addition, this filter removes the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. All right, we're back live with Dr. Christopher Busby. He is a chemical physicist and uh, advises major governments on issues of radiation. So I've already laid out some of the numbers, the statistics. Uh, there's over 400 reactors, 90 plus percent are leaking. Anybody can look that up. Now they just say, oh, it's okay if it leaks. Things bigger than Three Mile Island. And so uh, everyone knows what radiation does to people. Everyone knows it increases cancer. Everyone knows it increases mutation. Everyone knows uh, who's not even a scientist, but we're entering this world of denial. Dr. Busby, finish your point that got cut off by the break uh, about uh, crazies in the past, mafia in the past, versus the current global mafia. And then let's get into why I'm seeing articles all over the place, mainstream and alternative, saying Fukushima, the worst is yet to come. And then tell us if that's true or not. Yes, right. Well, what market forces and the kind of concentration of the global mafia has been able to do is to produce such an enormously powerful military uh, and uh, nuclear orientated structure that, that that it's possible to choose scientists and to pay them pay those scientists that you want to tell you the things that you want to hear or to tell you the things that enable you to continue with the operation that's making you lots of money and acquiring lots of power now of course you can step back from that and i have a number of times tried to to, uh, to understand what it is that makes certain people want to be powerful and rich what kind of insecurities there are and certainly we see throughout history people like um, well, if you like Hitler, insecure people who, who, who become powerful because of their insecurity. And terrible things can happen because then they can acquire around themselves other people like themselves and they can pay those people 
and then you end up with a situation which is monolithic and virtually impossible to, to, to deal with, and terrible things happen. But what, what we have now is something that is, it is almost universal and global, and the situation, because of the sheer magnitude of the problem, the, 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 the level of radionuclide emissions into the environment from all sorts of sources, from the depleted uranium, from the new super weapons that use uranium, from the endless leaking of these nuclear power stations, which, which have just con continued and are getting worse because, as, the, as the nuclear power stations themselves are getting old, all of these things have, have conspired together to increase the concentration of radionuclides in the environment to a level where it is now threatening life on Earth. There is no question that it is reducing fertility, that it is increasing cancer, and, and the, the future looks really quite bleak. And, 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 and particularly it looks bleak because of what I can now go on to. You asked me to look at this this Fukushima situation. I want to do that. I want to do control. that in a moment, but I want to digress back to what you were just saying briefly, and then we'll get into the latest on Fukushima itself while everybody's tuning in. But what you say so eloquently is what Eisenhower in his farewell address warned about. He said the military industrial complex has been seized by corporate interest and and it itself is then seizing the entire scientific complex to where they will be unopposable. And now they've hired all these mercenary scientists that will go along with anything. And it does seem like the madness of Nero or something. It's not. It's, it's even worse because not only do they acquire scientists by paying them money in order to, 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 to pro, pro, provide bogus scientific reports that support their position, but anyone who happens to stand up and say something which they don't like or find something which goes against their, their, their crazy world view, this person gets swiftly dealt with. I mean, I can name names. There was a, a young scientist in Sweden called Martin Tondell who discovered that there was a significant increase in cancer in the Sweden northern Sweden after the very small amounts of radioactivity conventionally expressed <coughs> that, that fell in northern Sweden after the Chernobyl accident. Now, he was swiftly dealt with by his boss. His boss is a chap called Lars Erik Holm, who was the ex-head of the International Commission on Radiological Protection and is now, would you believe, can you imagine, the medical officer of health for Sweden. Wow. So if you, if you want to know what's happening in Sweden in terms of health, you go to Lars Erik Holm, who is the ex-head of the International Commission on Radiological Protection. Well, that's like Obama is putting Cass Sunstein, the regulations are that said it was okay to spy on people without warrants on the NSA Blue Ribbon Board to investigate the NSA. Yes, yes. Well, of course, we can, and we can find many, many, many situations in which this sort of thing happens. Monsanto. It's, 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 a, it's a sort of third world war, isn't it? It's, 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 the, it's the governments versus the people. It's truly extraordinary. Wow, we're going to go to break. Long segment coming up, and I want to then get into what's happening at uh, at Fukushima itself. But it is it, it, it's it's like a bunch of crazy governments and corporations above the law, not in control of themselves, just on total power trips who don't even care about their grandchildren. Now, Dr. Busby, yeah. what's the best place for people to visit to see all your scientific papers and work? Uh, my Green Audit website uh, is, is www.greenaudit.org uh, and I, there's also a very good website which I'm associated with called the Low Level Radiation Campaign. I had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound. When I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com. Boy, we are riders on the storm. There is no doubt about that. Up on screen at InfoWars.com, we have a link to a National Geographic story 
latest radioactive leak at Fukushima. How is it different? So that's how uh, they report it. And then I've got all the different mainstream, you name it, uh, saying, you know, a Fukushima leak is much worse than we were led to believe. That's a BBC, uh, Huffington Post, uh, radioactive groundwater uh, nears the sea, Fukushima endgame, uh, the water has nowhere to go, going to the uh, uh, Fukushima inspectors careless. Uh, most of the Fukushima 50 are dead or dying, including the director, but it's not bad for you, Ann Coulter says. See, when Ann Coulter first said that, I thought, man, she's gone crazy. But it, it, that turned out that was a talking point. And see, my issue here is people say, what are you worried about radiation? You don't agree with the environmentalists on a lot of stuff. I'm a real conservationist environmentalist, okay? I don't want toxic waste in my food and water. I don't like GMO because I've got unlimited studies and know how bad it is and know farmers that feed it to their cows and it kills them. I mean, I've experienced it. And then I read about the groups that are putting these out. It's about population reduction. And then you kind of get the answer. They don't care whatever they do because it's just like, it's not even a reduced population. It's like an anti-human thing. It's, just, it's, it's psychopathic. And, you know, you talk about carbon dioxide and, and, and what we're doing. You can argue all day what carbon dioxide is doing to the earth. The point is they want a carbon tax for the elites to get real rich. Uh, the first people to push that were... Ken Lay and Al Gore from Enron. But if they do something about the reactors and the GMO and all that, and then came to me and said, we really think carbon dioxide's a big issue, then I'd listen to them. But I've gone and looked at all the big threats. It's radiation, GMO. Then there's stuff like overfishing that I know is real and you know overcutting of things. And run I mean, there's a lot of real stuff. The problem is none of these big corporations want to do anything about that. They just want to run around and have carbon taxes because it doesn't affect what they're doing because they can just tax everybody. And, and, and the only reason I raise that is because you look at what's going on with Fukushima. In the last month, all the alternative media and Dr. Busby and others have said, this is getting serious. And then now it's strange that he's on today. Suddenly it's breaking in the mainstream media, other than Japanese media. They were admitting it a few weeks ago that this is very serious. So you're a physicist. You've studied this. Your team has been there. What's really happening with the reactors? Why are people so scared? And how are they saying this is going to be much worse than what's already happened? Is that accurate? Well, it, it is going to be much worse than, it's, than has already happened if certain things happen. But I can't really see any way of stopping those things happen. So I, 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 I'm afraid I don't have a very positive outlook with regard to all of this but i should start by saying that i always said it was serious what's happening now is people are slowly cottoning on to the fact that everyone that was talking about it was covering it all up and now it's becoming increasingly clear and in the future it will be increasingly more clear that that all along it was very serious right from the very beginning from the first explosions which threw all the bits and pieces of reactor and fuel rods and whatnot up in the air where they went pitter patter onto the ground and, and the fact that the, the, the pressure vessels themselves are hold and material has gone through the pressure vessel into the ground, we don't know how much, but the whole of the area around it is, is, is radioactive because the fuel is out of the, uh, out of the box that it was in. That, that's the problem. Now, we hear all about how the, the water is leaking into the Pacific Ocean and, and how could the water be radioactive uh, when they've gone to such lengths to to ensure that it can't get to the Pacific Ocean and it can't be radioactive, the fact is, it is all it was always radioactive because they, all of this stuff fell into the ground and the groundwater soaked it up and the huge amounts of water that were pumped in there to keep the thing cool and are still being pumped into uh, to to keep the thing cool are leaking out through holes in the pressure vessel, leaking out through the through the spent fuel tank holes and so on. Um, and contaminating the ground, and that water is inevitably going to get back to the sea. This is, it's impossible for them to, not, uh, to, to stop it from getting to the sea. It's like trying to push water uphill. And back when it happened, you pointed out that, uh, that when you can eject those fuel rods, when the uh, MOX reactor blew up that has the plutonium in it, it shot them, a letter the New York Times had to, to admit, two miles away, and they had to have bulldozers just cover right. it up where it's at. Yeah. Why not? Ha I mean, this is insanity. It's right on the ocean. All that debris has now hit the U.S. It's hitting Canada. And their answer is it's not bad for you. Please continue. Yes. Well, I have to say that, that, that although it is bad for you, it's not the kind of Armageddon, the, 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 the dilution of this material into the, into the Pacific is not the Armageddon that, that some people have been saying. So as far as That's the good concentration... News. 
So as far as the concentration of this stuff is concerned in terms of the Pacific coast of America, there will certainly be increases there and the fish will become more radioactive than they were before and so on. But the levels of radioactivity in the fish are not going to be so enormously high that they would constitute a, a, a sort of, a sort of t totally disastrous scenario. Um, what, what is far more, and this is because the Pacific consists of, it contains about 300 million cubic kilometers of water. Now, I know it's not going to all dilute into the water, you know, uniformly, and so there are going to be concentrations in the various currents that flow north across across to, to the United States, and then the surface drift that takes the stuff across the United States by the water. But by the time it gets to the, to the coast, it will be very much diluted. And uh, it will certainly contaminate the coast, and the coast will have an effect on the people living there. But they're not all going to suddenly drop dead. The, the, what, what is much more serious is what they're now doing. Because what has happened is, as a result of the vast amounts of water that they've pumped into these things to keep them war uh, cool, and they're still pumping into them to keep them cool, the, the whole of the land, and this is how I see it, of course, you, they never tell you this. You have to sort of deduce it all in some kind of Sherlock Holmesian way. Uh, the land around these reactors has become soggy. It's filled up with water, and water's getting into the Pacific, and the whole thing is like some sort of marsh. Now, the problem with that is that these reactors themselves are enormously heavy. And so they're going to sink into the marsh and they're going to lose stability and possibly collapse. Now, if that happens, the main problem is reactor four, because there's a, there, there's a, a tank there, as, a, as you know, uh, which contains about 1,300 plus spent fuel elements inside this tank, which have to be continually kept warm. The tank has to be kept full of water. And if the tank breaks which it would do if it, if it slid, uh, slid sideways and, and, and lost its structural integrity, then these fuel rods will then catch fire and might even melt and explode, which, which is what I believed happened originally when there was the first explosion. Well, sure, you were the, proven right. I mean, mainline news admitted that they picked up the isotopes that meant that the, uh, what is it, fission had happened? Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. Well, it's fissioning now all the time. I mean, the, the, we know there's fissioning there because these short half-lived isotopes uh, are, are, are being detected. Sure, sure. Why are they calling it a new leak now? Because you were saying this months ago that it was obviously leaking, and now they admit that it's leaking and that it's getting soggy and that it is going to sink into the ground, and then well, I guess they can't keep it cool, then it blows up? Well, because they're measuring, because people are now measuring the radioacti uh, radioactivity, the radionuclides in the seawater on the coast, and they can't say that, and they have to admit it, because that's the only place it can be coming from. So what they've done is, I think, probably invented this idea that these tanks are leaking, these enormous numbers of tanks that they've got there. You've seen the pictures. And so the only way that it can get to the sea within the, w w you know, having told all the lies that they've told, they've now got to continue to make up new lies in order to justify the original lies. Uh, and they're saying, well, these tanks are leaking. But, of course, they can't find any leaks in the tanks, but they're still looking. Of course, nothing to do with the tanks leaking. It's the fact that the whole area around is, is, is saturated with radionuclides as a result of the original explosions and the, and the, the bulldozing of the old fuel elements and the holes in, in the reactors and probably a sort of minor China syndrome, although it's not China. In fact, if you go to the other end of the Earth, it's Buenos Aires, Argentina. So that's the Buenos Aires syndrome. Sure, sure. Well, explain the type of explosion that you documented happened in Russia and the Russians documented uh, that you then believed happened there. And then later the evidence came out uh, of the nuclei that show the reaction happened. Explain that to us, doctor. Well, the, 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 there are various kinds of, uh, of, of uh, arguments that were brought forward to say that there was a hydrogen explosion. And we know that there, are hyd there is a hydrogen explosion. But in Chernobyl, a number of scientists who were in St. Petersburg actually measured a ratio of xenon isotopes, which enable us to tell whether it's a nuclear explosion or whether it's a, a hydrogen explosion. The ratio of the xenon, short-lived xenon isotopes, xenon-133, xenon-133M, xenon-135, that tells you the kind of explosion that occurs. And in fact, they, they, the, the test site, the people who are trying to detect whether someone's letting off an atom bomb somewhere, they have, a, they have detection places all over the world for this. There's a CBC, CBTO or something, you know, the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty Organization have me measurement sites all over the place. 
And so original, so eventually they can actually detect the concentrations of these isotopes that enable you to tell whether it's a nuclear explosion or not. And in the case of Chernobyl, it certainly was, because the ratio of these isotopes showed that there was a nuclear explosion, and it wasn't a hydrogen explosion at all, although a hydrogen explosion did follow, of course, because there's, there's lots of hydrogen there. Now, I think that that reactor four explosion was a nuclear explosion. I think what happened is that the, the, the tank ran dry, there was a meltdown of a significant proportion of the fuel elements in the tank, the reactor four tank, this one that's got the huge amount of radioactivity in it. Incidentally, half of the entire uh, quantity of radioactivity in the whole of the Fukushima opera complex is, in, is sitting in that tank. This is why everybody's freaking out. There's about 10 to the 20 becquerels of radionuclides in that tank. So that's, that's one and 20 zeros. And that represents about 50 to 100 Chernobyl accidents. So if that lot went up, you, then you are in trouble. It's not a question of it going into the Pacific then, because this not, now it's in the air, and the air gets across the Pacific quite, quite, quite reasonably fast. It's not, not like uh, it dilutes in the Pacific, but ju the jet stream carries it straight across to America. So you're in deep shit if that, if that happens. So what they have to do is to keep, is to keep that thing from, from, from losing its water and, and, uh, and then subsequently melting down. What, what I think happened was that there was a distillation of the plutonium from the plutonium parts of, the, of those spent fuel rods. And the, the critical mass of plutonium is about nine kilograms. Now, nine kilograms, because plutonium is so dense, is, rep is represented by a quantity of plutonium about the size of an apple, or maybe two apples, but anyway, not very much. So if that lot gets together, there's an enormous bang and everything goes up in the air. Now, so if you have explosions, have. it'll start slapping all this radioactive material together, which could create the same thing you get with an atomic blast. And now it's in the middle of one of the biggest nuclear waste dumps in the world where they've been storing 40 years of this crud uh, right on a fault line, right on a tsunami line. And they promised in their studies, for those that didn't uh, remember this two years ago, that they would never you know, have a problem if they got hit by a tsunami. And then obviously they did. And now they're saying, don't worry. Dr. Busby, I want to give the number out for people that are in Japan who have Vonage or IP phones. They can call us 800 259 9231. 800 259 9231 and give us their take on what it's like uh, living in this and the kids dropping dead and the cancers exploding and the deformed animals that are being born, insect and plant and animal. I mean, it's just amazing. 800. 259-9231, and I'm trying to pull up an actual number to the network for folks to call direct uh, so I can uh, give that out to people. My guys are pointing it out to me now. Oh, there it is. They put the number up. It's uh, uh, your country code, 011, and then 1-651-695-7755, 1-651-695-7755 to call us direct from Japan uh, and uh, give us your, your take on that. But, sir, what should I do? Because I saw the reports, Dr. Busby, of milk on the West Coast and, 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 and surface vegetables having 10, 20, 30, 40 times, depending on the isotope, safe levels. Uh, milk as far away as Vermont having higher levels. And it was always, just don't worry, this radiation isn't bad for you. So I went back and looked at old literature, and they said it's very bad, don't drink it, don't eat it. I looked at the plume coming in over Texas, you know, not very high levels, according to many experts, but still, my wife's like, do we go to the Southern Hemisphere? If this thing blows up, they'll obviously say it's safe, no big deal. How long do I need to take, uh, you know, nascent iodine, they say is the best or whatever, or do I move my wife and children uh, to Chile or something for a few years? What would you do, Dr. Busby? Yes, I think I think if it did blow up, I, I would be inclined to get out of the path of the fallout. Um, and so that means because the winds blow north and south from the equator, uh, and as we know from the concentrations of radionuclides that came down uh, after the nuclear weapons testing in the 60s, we know that in the so southern hemisphere the concentrations are lower than they are in the northern hemisphere. So, so yes, so if, if, if that did happen, and, le and let's hope it doesn't happen, because they are trying to, to pull the, um, the, the fuel rods out and, and do something about it, although God knows how they're going to succeed in doing that. But if it does happen, and if it gets bad, well, then I think it's time to, to head for the hills, Alex, yes. And, of course, we know from Chernobyl it circled the Earth and came back to England. We know that uh, 
from the using DU bombardments the last two Gulf Wars. I know universities picked up the DU in England and in France, and I remember the professors got in trouble there uh, for warning people. I mean, what about, yeah, what about folks in Europe? Well, Europe is much further again, uh, and so so what? So you know, if you like to see it in this way, it would be like uh, Japan would be ten, and uh, United States would be like like three, and and Europe would probably be one, uh, on that sort of level, very very roughly, um, and uh, the, the and it, and it would be a sort of repeat, only worse of the atmospheric weapons testing of the period 1952 to 1963, which was absolutely ter terrible. I mean, the, the, the large bombs that were being exploded in the atmosphere then rained down enormous quantities of uranium and strontium-90 and cesium and all of this stuff which we're, which we're talking about now. And that caused the cancer epidemic, the one that started in the And 1980s. by the way, for those that don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, those were fractions of what's at this giant nuclear waste dump. I get so many... People that send me emails or comments going, Alex, we did all the nuclear testing. Those were huge explosions that blew up whole, you know, islands. Why are you worried about a small explosion? They don't get a cleaner explosion where most of it is destroyed in an atom bomb or a hydrogen bomb. They don't understand how dirty reactors are. Can you explain why this is so dangerous to people? Well, well, I, I, at the moment, I have to say that 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 that, that I. I I think that the weapons fallout was very serious, and the main. No, no, I know it's that, bad, but I'm saying compared to something like this. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, compared to something like this, there's a lot more stuff in in in, in if the whole lot of this went up. But the but the thing is that it won't go up in the same way as the weapons fallout. Weapons fallout was went up into the stratosphere and circled the Earth. But this probably won't do that because it because the explosion won't be a kind of megaton explosion. It will just be a local explosion. So a lot of that stuff will go into the into the Pacific. It won't it won't go up high enough to be to be taken right the way across the Pacific. All of it, and I, I don't think all of it will go up as well. That's the other thing. But I mean, it won't be good. So I, I, I don't think that you, you should say that this or anyone should say that this is going to be so terribly much more than the weapons fallout. But we really don't know because it, it might all go up. And if it does all go up, then 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 who knows? Because there's an awful lot of it. There's more of it than than in the weapons fallout anyway, but not a lot more. Wow. It's quite bad. Amazing. I mean, we usually when we open this up every uh, during Fukushima, we get tons of calls from Japan. We're only getting a few coming in right now. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the Infowars Nightly News. And over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones radio show live as it happened. So check it out, Infowars.com forward slash show. We got a few, a few minutes left in this segment, a little bit into overdrive for calls for Dr. Busby, who's a leading researcher and physicist uh, dealing with nuclear fallout and problems from it. And he's proven to be very accurate in the last few years since Fukushima in his predictions. The toll free number to join us is 800 259 9231 for a few questions uh, on the subject here. But uh, some of my crew ran back again and said, ask him about Japan saying smile and it will protect you. I think we already pretty much covered that. But what do you make uh, of the, the some of the green movements trying to proliferate the answer to pollution is building more local nuclear substations in every city? That sounds like a horrible idea to me. It is a horrible idea. <laughs> the whole idea of doing any nuclear um, energy um, reactors anywhere is a horrible idea. I, I don't know how anybody can imagine, after what's happened in Chernobyl and what's now happened in Fukushima, um, th that there is any sense in continuing using this dreadfully dangerous te uh, technology. Um, for, for 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 creating energy, it just seems totally absurd. And uh, but the, but the green movement has been penetrated by by all sorts of of um, fifth columnists and so forth, as I know, as I know. Um, that I I was I was a, 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 in the Green Party for for many years, and I, I I could see then, and I saw in Europe when I was working for the Policy Information Network on child health and environment. You can actually identify the people coming in and and skewing the direction of the discourse, 
So we, we know that these people exist, and we know that they're, that they're paid to, to, if you like, attack me on the Internet. Another good example, you know, I had a whole load of shills and trolls and people writing things into my Wikipedia entry and, and attacking me in various ways and so forth. So, so let's not get too, 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 too worked up about the Green Movement. The Green Movement, like any other movement, can be controlled. Sure, sure. I mean, my, my only point is, how can the establishment let this go on when they know it's 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 always having problems, they don't even care now. Reactors are leaking like never before. Hello? Don't they care about their grandkids? I mean, this is this is this is not a suicide pact to be in control. I mean, what's the point of this? While they suppress well, n new technologies, we have. To Go ahead. We have to be. We ha we have to distinguish between the concept of the establishment and the and and people within the establishment. That I mean, the, the the establishment is only a number of people. I mean, at the end of the day, they've got names. Like I said, you know, Lars Eric Holm is the medical officer of health for Sweden. So so there are individuals in 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 all of these systems who are at key positions who can control the discourse and who can control the media, the the, the overall media, as you know. Um, uh, and 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 put out various pictures of reality which are just totally untrue. Now the re reason they do that is because they're paid to do it. It's it's as simple as that. They're paid to do it. It's not about whether they care about their children or don't care about their children and so on. It's a it's a choice between being extremely rich and powerful and possibly your children might get leukemia, or or else being just an ordinary bloke, you know, who 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 doesn't have. But who, what who is the point of powerful. ruling if you wreck everything? I, I just. I just don't get these people that I, I don't get it. I just don't get it. But I, I think I think it's I think it's a it's a personality thing, Alex. You know, you have to see you have to see that as person different personalities. There are different personalities, and some personalities are dangerous dangerous to put to to, to, to put in charge. And, and unfortunately, democracy throws these people up as leaders because they'll lie to everybody and tell us what we want to hear. I think I think it comes down to we have been a lazy, disposable society as well. I mean, just look at how unhealthy we are, everything. I'm not on some high horse either. I'm just as bad as the next person. But my goodness, any idiot knows these reactors are just melting down and leaking everywhere. Cancer's exploding. Uh, we're going to come back with a quick little five-minute segment. Now we have loaded phones and I think some calls from Japan, of course, because we're running out of time. Hello, this is Hank Hill. And I'm telling you what, you need to listen to Alex Jones. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Infoworth.com. Yeah. <laughs> My judge, what is the secret of the universe? <laughs> Infoworth.com. Yeah. <laughs> hey. University panel discusses cutting off food, bioweapons to reduce population. They're already doing it with the DU. And I got a bunch of stories I don't even have time to get to that just went up on InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. By the way, Dr. Busby, we have hard breaks because of satellites. You got cut off earlier trying to give out the website for the LLRC. Give that out. And then we'll jam in a few final questions here for you. Yeah, right. That, that's the website, LLRC.org. And uh, the other one, as I said, was GreenAudit.org. Um, and also, we we have one called nuclear uh, nuclearjustice.org, so which is which is also a, a, a development now, which is we're hoping that people will write will help us to to take petitions to the European Parliament sure. and to other organisations. Well, there is a madness, and I mark it from 1990. They knew the DU couldn't be used. All the reports said it. They just said, you know what? It's good for you now. Uh, and and they just don't. I mean, it was first. Oh, wash your hands and wear a mask. Now it's like, eh, don't worry about it. Uh, let's go ahead and take a phone call, Mike. No, no. First off is Chris. Chris in Florida. You're on the air. Quick question for Dr. Busby. Well, Dr. Busby, what do you think of the idea of using certain kinds of lasers for selectively increasing the speed of radioactive isotope decay? I uh, found a, a study from University of uh, Helsinki University of Technology, Finland, laser-enhanced radioactive decay and selective transmutation of nuclei, and there are others. But what do you think of that idea? I think that, that it would be interesting to, to do some experiments to see if it's possible to do this, but, but my feeling is that it's not. And that these sorts of experiments uh, and th this sort of uh, approach 
actually would probably end up with producing more radioactivity or at least more dispersion of radioactivity. There's a, there, there's a, a system which they want to build in Sweden now for doing this kind of thing. Um, and the problem is that it, when you build this system, you then have to bring all the radioactivity, all the, radio, the radioactive waste there. And in that very process, you create... Uh, all sorts of possibilities for for um, so the best thing is to find a place in the middle of the desert that doesn't have fault lines and uh, yeah, seal it in concrete. Right. That's right. That's right. Leave it alone and and uh, and and put a fence around it and watch it for the rest of eternity. That's my, my all right. My, great question, approach. caller uh, for Fukushima. Though, how do you get enough lasers in there to like? I mean, how many hundreds of thousands of fuel rods are there, doctor? There's 1,300. There's approximately 240 tons of fuel in reactor 4, which represents 1 and 20 noughts of Becquerel's. Uh, and you could say that in terms of explosive power, if it all went off, you can say 1 megaton per ton of uranium. So you've got approximately 240 megatons Good Lord. Of, uh, of explosive there. So um, you're, we're talking about quite a lot of stuff. Isn't 240 megaton bigger than any bomb they've built? Yes, but if you add all the bombs together, it, it comes to quite a lot of megatons. And and it won't, of course, it won't go off like sure, that. Sure, so sure, but it's a disaster. Just, it's unbelievable. It's just give it, giving you a sort of rough idea of, of what, they, what there is there. Sure, but aren't they storing tons. like 500 plus thousand rods there at the facility? One th uh, the the number of rods in in the in react in the reactor four vessel is one thousand three hundred rods. Yeah. No, 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 but I meant the whole facility storing a bunch, right? Oh, it's it's probably about twice as much as that if you take the whole. So, uh, so about in terms of total quantity of material, about half of it is in the reactor four um, tank. Because uh, I remember reading the news pre press reports of how much waste was there. It was some astronomical amount. Real fast, Mike in Tennessee. Quick question. Oh, good afternoon. Yes, uh, the problem I see is that the trade winds, the uh, prevailing winds, run clockwise on the northern hemisphere. They run counterclockwise in the southern hemisphere, which actually acts as a protection. So I can see why the Bushes uh, 10 years ago would buy vast tracts of land over the aquifers in South America to get ahead of the... Yeah, Paraguay. Uh, Par they're, they're actually, my dad was down there on a charity thing, and the Bushes have companies everywhere and have actually moved down there. The reason people do this, uh, Alex, you know, they are Luciferian, and it's just like the old girl. If I can't have him, nobody else can, so they just destroy what they can't totally control, and there's too many uh, free will people in the United States, so might as well destroy well, them. Yeah, whatever. Whatever it is, it's evil. Dr. Busby, thank you so much for spending time with us. Look forward to talking to you again. Hopefully things will not be explosive, like you've said, and we appreciate your time. Fingers crossed, Alex. Fingers crossed. Yeah, everybody say a prayer. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.